How's it going guys? So this is going to be a straightforward quick video. I'm not going to talk long. I went all through YouTube and I couldn't find one for this year truck. And so what we're going to do is I've got I've got 58,000 miles on this truck with the factory Rancho shocks. I'll show you the truck in a second. It's a 2021 Silverado 2500 diesel Duramax. Um, so um, I, I've never really liked how the Ranchos rode. I, I, I think they did fine. Um, but uh, I'm going to upgrade them to those Bilstein's uh, 5100s. And um, this is going to be the install video. Um, I also uh, do some uh, before and afters driving over like a slow speed bump so you can kind of see how much the suspension moves. Uh, anyway, so let's get into it. Oh, so, here's the truck. This is a 2021, like I said. And I know this model came out in 2020. So um, this will be good for 2020s, 2021, 2022. I think in 23 they changed the grill and stuff, but I believe that'll still work for you. Um, so anyways, but this is for that good model change there. I wanted to make this video because you guys can do this stuff. Changing shocks, it seems like it gets a little tight in the front, um, but this is, this is not a big deal. And I'm just a regular dude, a regular dad with kids. You can do this in your driveway. You don't need a bunch of special tools. Um, you guys can do this. So it'll just be a quick step-by-step and uh, I hope it helps. So I want to show you how easy these things can be. I don't have my truck up on blocks and you don't have to have your truck on blocks either. If you have some uh, blocks to put it up on, go for it. If you have a car lift, use it. If you want to jack it up and take the wheels off, go for it. I'm going to just show you how to do it by putting it up on some um, parking blocks. Just give me a little bit extra height underneath the truck. Uh, but it's, that, it's not necessary. So there's a shock that we're going to be getting off. We'll start with the easy the easy uh, side, which is the back, and, uh, and we'll get to it.
All right, so that's the top of the shock. And the cool thing about this bolt is, is that side is mounted, is uh, threaded to the bracket. So you don't have to worry about putting another wrench on that side. And so yeah, all you gotta do is worry about putting the bolt on that side, which is a 13 16 And down here at the bottom, same goes for this bad boy, 13 16 There's a nut on the other side. A lot of times you can just pull this off and, and hold this with your hand and it'll come right off. If not, you can put a crescent wrench on this side. It's no big deal. You're just taking these things off. These things are not on here very tight um, from the factory. So when you put these back on, hand tight with a wrench is all that you're really going to need. So um, you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised when you pull these things off how not tight that, they, that you think that they might be. All right, so this is the first time I'm putting a wrench on here. And you'll see... You can't see the back side of this bolt. Maybe you can on that angle. You'll see from the factory how these things are. Look at that. Comes right off. Now this is starting to move a little bit, which is totally fine. You just go grab another 13 16 which I'm gonna have to do. No biggie. All right. So if you have an impact gun, go for it. If you don't, use a ratchet. If you don't have a ratchet, get a wrench. If you don't have a wrench, use a crescent wrench. It's totally fine. Just be careful if you do have an impact gun that you don't blow the threads off this thing when you put it back on. All right. You can see the shock is pretty loose. So this puppy will just come right out. So these shocks are under a little bit of pressure. You'll see that come down like that. All right, next we're gonna start on the top. All right, I'm trying to get a good angle for you guys. Hold on to your shock when you pull your bolt out so it doesn't come crashing down on you. All right. All right there you go, we're out. It's that easy. So, got to do the famous side by side so you guys can see what they look like. All right. So, there's your stock Rancho on there. And I'm already intimately aware for the Rancho fan guys out there, which I like Ranchos too, they're fun. Um, this truck is a 2021. I'm assuming the shocks are probably very close to that age. And the truck has 57,000 miles on it. So these Ranchos aren't new. Um, they have 57,000 miles on them. So keep that in mind when you see the comparison. When I put this bad boy right here, it just plummets. I mean, I'm pushing this with one hand. I don't know if you guys, did it show up in frame? Yeah. Okay. So I'm pushing that with one hand. Then it's climbing slowly. Um, so it's, it's a little tired. You know, even if you were to just put ranchos back on here. Um, but for the price of these 5100s, here's a new one. Um, they're, just, they're just a far superior shock. So just take this little uh, cover off there and you see how that expands on its own. Let me see. If I can push this down with one hand. I gotta kinda brace myself, but I can. But there is a considerable difference. So, new shock versus old shock, but there you go. All right, what I like to do is put a little anti-seize on these bolts because you're not gonna see them again for another 60,000 miles. And, uh, they actually say these Bilstings can go up to 100,000 miles. People are reporting using them. As far as how good they are when they take them off at 100,000, I don't know. Uh, but I tow a gooseneck a few times a month on this, about 18, 19,000 pounds. So I probably wear my shock set a little faster than average. But anyways, I put a little anti on here. This is some high temp stuff. You definitely don't need to use this, but it's all I have right now. Um, but it's the same stuff. Um, you don't have to murder the threads with this. Just put a little on there. Oh, look at me. Look at how much I put on there like an idiot. <laughs> Keep your mistakes in the video to show that you're human. If you get too much on there, just pour a little off and wipe it off on the rag. No big deal. All right, so there is an upside and a downside to your shocks. So don't be a knucklehead and put them in upside down. Even though it's gonna ruffle some feathers out there, but uh, it's probably not that big of a difference if you did mount your shock upside down. Anyways, we'll just put it in the right way. No 
I'll get that sucker screwed in. And I'm gonna tighten this one down with the old speed gun there, but we're gonna attach the bottom first before we tighten it down, and I will show you why. So, here's the reason why we don't tighten the top yet. If you do, it'll be stiff, and you try to move it, and it's kinda stiff, right? But if you leave it loose, then you can get the bottom one in, then you tighten them both at the same time. So, let's let that sucker hang there. Let's get a little bit of this anti-sneeze on this bolt here. Hopefully I don't get too much on there. Okay, just need a little bit. Okay, and comes the fun part, pushing it up. It'll be a little annoying, but you can do it. You'll be fine. Okay. So, little trick. Let's go a little bit past. Get your bolt ready. As it wants to come down and pinch your fingers. Let's slide that sucker in there. And you're good. All right. I'll spin that sucker on there. And we'll buzz her down. All right. Get the torque spec ready. Snap on. Craftsman on. Made in Bangladesh. Press a wrench here. Get a little tight by hand. And we're going to call it good. All right. All right, let's do the top. Well, that's all we'll do. Okay. So like I said, we're not torquing down the cable lines on the Golden Gate Bridge here. And your truck ain't going anywhere if you get nervous that you don't have them tight enough or they're coming loose or you want to check your stuff. Well, then just drive it up on the blocks and check it in the driveway in a few miles or whatever. So, but that's about all you need by hand. You're good there. Hey, always make sure you have on your headphones and have a podcast going on so you don't lose your mind bored under here. Anyways, let's go to the other side, which is mucho easier. Let me get this camera set up. All right, so the shock on this side is in front of the axle. The shock on the driver's side is behind it. So that bolt's really easy to get to. And then that puppy up there, so let's get him off. See how stiff that is? Because it's tight up there at top. So that's why we want to tighten them down at the end. Well, looky here. I don't think I can get my fun gun up there. Can I? Am I going to get lucky? Ooh. All right. That's cool. I'll take it. Here we go. All right. Don't tighten your fun gun up against the pipe here. Make sure you're able to get it out. Okay. Okay. Don't forget your never sees it. And no, just in case anybody's wondering, there's not a left and right shock. Not on these trucks. So they're the same part number. Either one works. All right, I'm going to leave that loose. This thing swings nice and free. And for everybody wondering, maybe you've been skipping ahead. The bags are totally empty. Um, the valve stem's out. So as I do the tests for the shocks... Um, these are having no effect on it there. I just pulled actually the uh, airline off, so they're, ch -ch -ch -ch, they're not holding any air, but these things work great for towing. I like it a lot. All right, let me get this camera mounted here. Maybe we can see something. For any of you that plan on doing any filming of your car, mounting the camera makes this job four times as long, but I love you guys, so I do it for you. And hopefully I'll get monetized one day and make money on YouTube. Who knows? Okay. 
And here's your big boy muscles. Don't cry. You'll get it. There we go. No big deal. Kind of half joking with all the grunt and kind of like half not because I'm fat. But this is no biggie. You'll get these in. All right, now let's tighten the top and the bottom down. Oh, Billy, you should use an impact socket. You should use an impact socket. Not for this job, anyways. All right, I might get lucky. Be able to tighten this down without this moving. You guys keep, you guys watch it. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's good. Let's get the top one. I can't get my fun gun up in here and film it. So I'm just gonna do this by hand for you guys. You guys thought I was gonna make you watch the whole thing, huh? No. Okay, so here's what we got. All right. Put puppies up in there. Looks good. And we got that one in. They look cherry. All right, let's do the front. All right, I wanna show you guys something. I have a, looks like a fancy air jack. This thing's only like 200 bucks. So you don't need a jack like I have. You can just use a regular jack or you don't even have to jack your truck up at all. But I just wanna show you, if you can manage to safely jack your truck up, I wanna show you how jacking it up on these particular trucks can help you out, okay? I like to get under the main frame right here. You can go from this to this. You see how much more space you gained there? Because the tricky part, not a big deal. It's gonna be getting this held up out of the way. And right under there, we got a little wiring loom. It's no big deal. You can see that there is a zip tie right here. That zip tie goes around this wiring loom. Same with this one. And it's got a little cap that sits on the threads of this bolt. So we're just gonna wiggle that off. So by having this space here, just gives you a little bit more space to work up on the top end. And I'll show you another trick. Uh, while the truck is planted flat on the ground, turn your wheels to the right and it opens up this fender well that much more. You're working on it. And then air that sucker up and you'll have a lot more room. You can take your wheel off. Go for it. I'm not going to yell at you. I could take my wheel off, but you don't have to. Look at all this room. I have plenty of room to get that bolt out on the bottom, to get those off the top, and tuck that shock back up in there. So, Let's get to it. All right, again, guys, don't skimp out. Don't be cool, guys. Have jack stands, okay? Have jack stands underneath your truck. So, this is also a 13 sixteenths. Your fun gun might need an extension um, because of the way that this is cast here. And getting this wrench on might be fun, but you'll get it. This is a good example. Um, when you have it jacked up, you'll have this happen sometimes, not with all shocks, not with all suspensions, but when you have the wheel hanging off, you'll notice that it's, um, it's overextending the shock. So what you can do is just let the um, jack down just a little bit and it'll release some of the pressure on the bolt. Nothing will just fall right out of there. Ah. 
All right, so see how that came down a little bit? This thing comes right out. Okay, so there's a little bolt here, like a little hex head. You can take this out. You can take the whole fender well out. I've seen guys too. It is not necessary. Um, and I know I make some jokes on here, but we don't have, by not taking all this stuff out, that's not half-assing anything. So you just have to get this wiring loom over the top of these bolts. And right there, this zip tie goes around to a cap that's on top of those threads, like I said, same here. So we just have to lift that off. And you guys will see it better as I start working here. But see how it just comes right off those threads? I don't know if you saw how easy that came off, but it comes right off the top. Same with this side. There, look at that. Can you see those? Can you see those threads? All right. <clears throat> now let's see what kind of wrench we can get in there. These, as you can tell, they just come right off. Now that's tight from factory. That's not me pre-loosening these for the video. Nothing. When you get to the top, don't forget to grab your bolt so you don't lose it. Fastener off here. Oh, we're loose. Hey, that's a good thing. I'll fast forward here in a second. You guys don't gotta sit through the whole thing. Okay, hey, not that bad boy. Okay, this puppy just comes right out. Just like that, you see? All right, let's go do the push on it test. Everybody likes to see that. Well, okay, there's the front one there. And here's the new one. There's the link there, um, identical. So they say online that these will also work with a one inch lift, but this bolt hole and this where this sits flush, they're identical. So if I push on the Rancho, again, 2021, six, uh, 57, 58,000 miles. They're a little, they're a little sad. Push them with one hand, all that good stuff. And the new ones. They're obviously going to be better, but these Bilsteins, I like the Ranchos, they're fine, but they are a superior shock. So, they feel good. There you go. All right. You saw it. Let's put it in the truck. Oh, they come with new hardware. I'm going to use it. Okay. You know me. I like to use a little anti-seize, so I got the anti-seize on there. If you are thinking, well, Billy got nylocks on there it's not because of the bolt coming off it's later down the road when you want it to come off it won't be as bad all right i keep bumping the camera i'm sorry it's tight up in here okay so you lower your shock down a little bit help you get your washer on just get your i currently have my forehead pressed against the fender so i'm doing this blind folks all right now we're kind of held up there. That's cool. Let's go on the other side. Put that washer up there. And fight with this wiring loom a little bit more. All right. Okay. So that puppy's up there. So you can tighten this down first before you do the bottom. On this kind of application, that is okay. If you want to leave it loose and then put the bottom one in, go for it. Um, that's what I'm going to do. All right, little bit of never sneeze on here. How hard can I hit the camera? Like butter. All right, get your nut on the back side. This is why we take the wheel off, Billy. Okay. Well, take the wheel off if you want. It's all good. We're going to be putting some new tires on this truck anyways. They're getting a little sad. So... Okay, now we can grab the fun gun, spin that thing down. All right, let's tighten down. Let's get our socket off here. However you can get under there, get that thing torqued down. 
These are a three quarter. And I do have a uh, three quarter ratchet wrench, but they're just a little tricky to get up it going in there. All right, so you won't be able to use the ratchet wrench all the way down because the back of the wrench hits the strut here. This one, um, you can't get the ratchet wrench on there at all because of the way the body's molded there. So you kind of got to do it the long way. So now we're at the end. Let's snug this thing down. All right. And if you get nervous when everything settles in, just hop under here and yank on them a little bit and see how they're doing. Won't take you very long and put your mind at ease if you think that they're coming loose or whatever, but be all right. Okay. And then those little caps for the uh, harness, just push those back on top of the studs. Just like that. And this one, just like that. Right. We're good here. Let's go do the other side. We're on the other side. And after we get this wheel turned, let's get it jacked up to give us a little bit more working room. See how much more room you got under here? No wiring harness, It'd be easier. Okay, you guys wanna see closer? I'm not gonna show you the whole thing on this one. You can see way up in there, super easy, lots of room. And down here, same thing, same bolt as the other side, same bolt as the other side. Okay, let's start with the bottom. Get the anises. Like butter. All right. So we're all done. See? That wasn't that bad. That's what we look like here. So let me get those jacks down. I'm gonna get under there and I'm gonna grab that bolt and give it a nice little oomph tight. And then we will go do the speed bump test.